Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is Nvidia's Shield K1 tablet. Back when it was released in 2014, it was among the most powerful tablets available and retailed for $199 or about the same in pounds. It was essentially a relaunch of the original recalled tablet and features a 1920 by 1200 IPS display, a 2.2 GHz quad-core Tegra K1 chip, 2 GB of RAM, 16 gigs of storage and currently supports up to Android 6 Marshmallow. I'm not 100% sure but it seems as though no one stocks these new anymore and for an immaculate used example the price hasn't really dropped below the original RRP. We'll get into why this may make for a PC replacement a little later on but first let's take a quick look around. So here at the home screen we've got stock Marshmallow and everything you would expect here like Google Chrome, Gmail as well as Nvidia's own camera application. The camera is poor though as with a lot of tablets. For use as an Android tablet it's very good with snappy web browsing, quick switching between applications and a nice sharp display. It is let down a little by a somewhat short battery life, about 4 hours of constant use and the keyboard is the biggest problem I've had. Honestly, it's super sensitive and even typing short sentences will often result in additional letters or numbers being placed among your words. All the other little issues like the occasional drop in Wi-Fi signal and jamming after the unlock screen seem to have been ironed out with the latest update though. Aesthetically, it's quite pleasing and sits nicely in your hands. Around the edges, we have a lock and volume buttons, as well as your standard headphone jack, mini HDMI, micro USB, and lots of speakers, which produce excellent loud sound. So let's talk about gaming. With standard Android apps, it's very good. We've got a couple of remastered Rockstar games here, for example. Max Payne runs well at 60fps and even the recent re-release of Bully runs well with the high settings, albeit with shadows turned way down. There is a bit of slowdown here and there's nothing really major in the way of lag. You can also project these games to your TV with an HDMI cable in either mirror mode or console mode which will turn the shield's display off. So let's get into the reason that makes this tablet different. This little app here, the Nvidia Shield Hub. Firstly, we have Game Stream, which will stream gameplay from your PC to this, sort of like PS4 Remote Play, but you have to have a high-end system on the other end, so we won't be focusing too much on that. But I'll tell you who does have a high-end PC, NVIDIA themselves, and that's where GeForce Now comes in. It's like Steam, except it costs $7.99 or £7.49 a month, with a month's free trial and gives you access to some of the latest and greatest titles at no extra cost. It's basically a cloud gaming service that streams the game from Nvidia servers to the Shield K1 and allows you to play at max settings with 60 FPS. Now I'm not a fan of cloud stuff to be honest, but I've been told it's quite good. I can also see why it can be helpful, I've often not been able to run a game smoothly and something like this sounds ideal, but is it actually any good? And can it replace the need for a gaming PC? So as you can see we've got a nice selection of games that are included free with membership. It's important to note that you'll need a wireless keyboard and mouse or controller to connect to the tablet to play the games first. There aren't any on-screen touch controls as these are of course full PC games. So let's jump into Sleeping Dogs. As you can see, even on my terrible internet, the game runs smoothly and looks great too. I have to admit it's nice not having to tweak any settings before playing, and because of the mini HDMI port, you can connect the tablet to your monitor and TV and stream them on a bigger screen if you want to, which is a lot more practical. We'll stick to playing on the tablet for now though to stick with the theme for the video. Let's try Tomb Raider next, and again it's running very well with no issues. I can see how this would be a decent alternative, but it still feels like a bit of a gimmick. There are also paid games available like The Witcher 3, Mad Max, and a few awesome indie titles too, with new games being added all the time. Overall, I can see the appeal playing PC games at max settings with 60 FPS on a tablet that you can also stream to your monitor or TV, but the startup costs really aren't that cheap. 200 for the tablet, 749 for the GeForce service, and another 20 to 50 for a controller or wireless keyboard and mouse comes to something around 250. 
although you are still getting one of the best Android tablets available too. It would be tough to build a PC even used that could match the performance for the same price, but something just doesn't feel right. I had fun playing PC games on this thing and the quality and clarity was surprising. PCs can always be upgraded though, even if you don't have the money right now. You'll always have the functionality of the PC itself too. As the Shield K1 ages, it will become slower and eventually need replacing. So if it starts struggling to perform, then all you have left is the game's streaming service. And that might not be around forever. If you have one of these already though, like I did, it may be worth checking out the GeForce Now service. If you come across a game that your PC can't handle... But I think if you don't, you'll be wise to invest $250 or pounds into a PC build. Can the Shield K1 replace your PC? No. Currently at this point in time, cloud gaming is still a bit of a gimmick like I said. Maybe in the future if it becomes more of a focus for hardware and game developers then maybe. But right now, the $200 Nvidia Shield K1 is just a good Android tablet and should really only be used as one. Of course, it's entirely up to you though, so let me know what you think down below in the comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching yet again. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it so much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.